Hello everybody, it's been a while. Our next camera is the Minolta 110 Zoom SLR. It was made from 1976 to 1979. A long time ago I reviewed the Mark II version of this, the successor to this camera. It's aperture priority automatic exposure. There's no manual except for X-Sync, which is a nice speedy 1 150th of a second and bulb. It has a CDS meter mounted on the front and it is connected to this aperture dial. I'm not sure if all of these openings do anything, but this one on the right at f4.5, it's all the way open and then it has three increasingly smaller dots as you stop down. It has a 25 to 50 millimeter zoom lens and like a micro four thirds camera it has a uh, field of view crop of two so this 25 to 50 millimeter zoom is equivalent to a 50 millimeter to 100 millimeter on a full frame 35 millimeter camera. It is uh, f4.5 at brightest, stops down to f16. Not a huge range, but pretty good for a 110 camera. The lens has kind of a cool setting. You swing it over to the 25 millimeter setting and then you pull it back and move it over and that's a macro setting it has a close focus of about 11 inches they give a pretty narrow range in the manual um, it's about 28 centimeters it's a decent little lens for a 110 camera it's 10 elements in 10 groups and then there's an extra macro element that swings in place when you go to that setting it takes uh, 40.5 millimeter filter. It came stock with a screw-in rubber hood. I have the plastic piece, but the rubber was rotten on this one, so I just took it off. The electronically controlled shutter goes from a thousandth of a second to 10 seconds, and that's stepless, so it'll match as best as it can the uh, aperture that you have selected. Um, X-Sync and Bulb they're both mechanical speeds, so if your batteries die, you can still use this thing. And having the X-Sync speed be 1 150th of a second, that's pretty nice. So it's actually usable without a battery. It has exposure compensation with this little switch here. That's plus or minus two, step, two stops in full stop steps. And that's pretty useful for what I was up against. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, this little red button here is a battery check button and it'll light up one of the LEDs in the viewfinder to let you know if your battery is good. It has a shutter lock that's kind of nice. This lock setting can't do anything. And then the on setting I had it cocked already. Um, it does have a tripod socket. It's on the side. Because it's so narrow, I guess there wasn't a lot of room to put anything up in here that would have been up into the film chamber. And it has a fully functional hot shoe. It's not a smart shoe in any way, but any standard flash will work in this guy. The information in the viewfinder um, it has yellow arrow pointing this way, and that's the direction it wants you to adjust the aperture. So that's telling you it's too dim and you should open up. And if it's red going this way, you're overexposed and it wants you to stop down. There is a micro prism. There's not a split image. And in good light, the micro prism is nice. It's got kind of a shimmery look to it. And when you're properly focused, that goes away. In low light, that's problematic. So I've been using it zone focusing when the light's not so great. That is about it. This little button here locks the dial. Normally you just leave it on A and then you got to push it in 
kind of looks like it should go down, but it's an in button, and that lets you swing it over to the X sync speed or to the bulb setting. This had a 12 exposure roll of film in it. It was some Kodak Kodacolor VRCL. Uh, didn't say a speed on it anywhere, so I looked it up and CP was 100, CL is 200, CM was 400. The film was discontinued in 1986, so no telling what the vintage of the stuff that was in this was. It was at about frame three, so I figured, eh, I got nothing to lose, so I finished out the roll. It's kind of cool. I got uh, this frame, a found photo. That was kind of nice. And then I took a digital just in case, but I shot this uh, while we were at Albuquerque monkeying around at uh, Cliff's Amusement Park. Got a couple of pretty cool pictures. After that, uh, film-wise, things went downhill pretty fast. The camera works just fine, but next I tried uh, some Lomography uh, Peacock. Uh, they call it X-Pro. They tell you it's for cross-processing. It's slide film. And I have a feeling they want you to cross-process it because it's not very good as slide film. Not sure of that. I was at the tail end of my slide chemicals, so part of it's probably that. And part of it is that I didn't always remember. Uh, it's 200-speed film. And the sensor in here like all of these, it has high, low. The sensor's right here. It reads the tab on the end of the 110 cartridge. So, in general, high for that with the tab cut off is 400, and low is 100 with the tab intact and sticking out. And this one being pretty sophisticated, it also has a sensor down here whether your film cartridge is inserted or not. Because without film, you can just wind and trip the shutter all day long. But with a film cartridge in it, if it's not um, moving across, then the shutter will lock up. So I ended up uh, having to trim the cartridge. Well, that was my third cartridge. Anyway, the uh, slide film was a bit of a bust. Didn't get too many. One interesting thing is the with the slide film, the frames I would get was obviously, you know, the uh, the the opening mask in the camera, and then I would get exposure beyond that up into where it says, you know, Lomography X Pro and on the sides. So that was kind of weird. And my third roll that I shot through this, since the slide film, I didn't get many usable images, I uh, made a Lego film slitter. This is Rev2, which kind of works. And I basically ruined a roll of T-Max 100, and then I was able to cut down successfully some Ilford XPS 200. It's their black and white film that's also pretty sensitive to infrared, um, so you can shoot it with an infrared filter. I did not do that with this camera. Um, I ended up uh, getting a usable roll that I could reload into a cartridge. I had to cut out because of the sensor because I didn't have the indexing holes in it. Anyway, I'm going to do a second episode about the fun trying to get 110 film working in a working camera. Um, so it, it took me a while to actually get to the point where I could do a video for this camera. So until I roll that next one about my adventures with 110 film, I will see you then.